Namaste. And uh, welcome you all to this important session. Well, many people have joined and few more are uh, joining. So before starting, we will just have a round of introduction. Well, so we are interested in knowing what product you have. So you can just type it in your chat box, what product you have and from which city you are, so that we know from which geography you are there. Well, you can just type it in your chat box, please. We can see your name. So there is no need to type name, but type your product and your city. Great. Yes. Okay, so if you see, um, we can see different different products from different different geography. There are people uh, from all over India, different different states, and um, I'm sure there are some people from overseas, you know, um, all of India also. Yes, so there are few people who are new. Yes, they are looking for new business opportunity. So welcome to this import conversation. This is one of the biggest opportunity, and we will see that today. How? Okay, garments. Herbal products, cosmetic products, spices, agriculture. Okay, from Mumbai, from Kolkata, from Kerala, from Gujarat, Kandla. Yes, the Kandla is a uh, port, minerals and agriculture products. Great. Okay, so you can see this is the beauty of this uh, business. Um, everybody has an opportunity in this industry. You know, uh, yes, compressed wooden wood pallets. Yes, good. So. Pallet is a required thing for export. Uh, now you see that many people prefer pallets while loading your uh, products or cargo in container. Good, great. Spices, dry fruits. Yes, these are uh, very popular products. Well, so welcome you all again. And uh, now we will see today about import export. We will learn about import export. How does uh, export happens? and how you can start your business well okay so let's move on so that's my introduction in brief my name is abhijit shinde i work as a founder of import export federation i'm an exporter consultant and trainer as well so before getting into import export industry i was into startup india and uh, we were consulting and incubating many startups, their strategy, their customer acquisition model, their funding, investments, and all those things. So we found that there are a lot of challenges in Indian markets and we have to step out. That's where import export came to our mind. And we explored this uh, industry and we got a success in that. And when we got deeper into import export, we saw that there are huge opportunities and um, there is a need for more and more people to come into this industry. When we saw India's numbers, we are convinced that, yes, this is what India need, export. We need to improve on our export. But why we are lagging? Because people doesn't have knowledge about it. And that's uh, our effort to educate people, to make you aware, to make people aware of this industry so that they can join this industry. And that is the purpose of today's webinar. So under this Import Export Federation, we believe that we can simplify the global trade. I'm sure a lot of people are skeptical about this industry. They think this is very complicated. This is very risky. This is very you know, high investment area. It's nothing like it. We will see how. you know. And if you learn this, it's easy. And we have proved that. A lot of our associates, our students have started export. And that's the proof. We have numbers. Great. So total, I have around 18 to 20, 18 to 20 years of uh, experience. Out of that, 12 years in IT, five years out of in, uh, India, I worked. Then six years in my family businesses like agriculture, hotel, and other businesses. And two years into more than two years into import export industry. Now the focus is only on export. You know, well. So under this import export federation, what we learn in import export industry is that you can start this business with one person. Individual can start this business. That's the beauty of this business. But when you want to grow, you need a lot of partners. You need to work with many stakeholders. You know, so you will need a support. So that support is missing in the market. And that's why people get stuck. 
and they face challenges you know so we have identified that gap and we import export federation are working on bridging that gap right so the first step what we do is knowledge sharing whatever knowledge whatever experience we have got in this two and three two three years in this industry we are sharing with you all through this platform today then people who decide to get into import export there are some advanced training programs for them then we do consultancy for small scale uh, businesses to promote their products overseas then we have buyers data we have supplies data we do all licensing part we do logistics part and we have some logistic partners chas and uh, shipping companies kind of thing so they help our associates to export their product then we uh, take our associates our students to the indian port to show them how export happens practically how packaging is done what is the custom clearance who is the custom officer who is the custom house agency how your cargo is loaded into container what happens to that container how it is scanned how it is boarded on the vessel so we show all these things practically seeing is believing right after that there is sea ocean there is nothing you can't go further so up to that point we go after that also if you see the next international market visit we also take people to overseas market and we show them what happens to their products how container arrive in that country how it goes to the market what are the taxes what are the expenses how that products are auctioned or sold how the statements are made and how that importer calculates his expenses and pay you your bills that's another part that also we show in international market will and next is financial advisory this is also very important because we many of us are not very literate in financial matters we think that we know everything but we don't know everything if you see that my qualification is also mba but i don't think i learned business in that forget about business i couldn't do my job properly such is such is our educational system what about business so many people get stuck in business because they don't have financial knowledge and in import export industry you need finances to grow your business there is a system banking system investment documents a uh, funding is there but how to take use of that people are not aware there are many exporters who are just exporting few containers and they are happy with that but they don't know what is the potential in their business so that's why this financial advisory service is important so under this import export federation we do all these things everything at one place you know and after that if you see on the bottom import export we do that also so federation is our learning and licensing part so we have other group companies through which we are trading we are in the field we are exporting products right so this is how we work and we share the knowledge with all of you through this platform okay so welcome all again to this import export federation before starting to the session let's decide what we are going to get out of this session it is important right so what is there for you what is there for you you should be able to take a decision about import export business today and our job is to help you to make that decision yes or no okay so we will give you a good overview of this import export industry today how does it works what are the challenges in that what are the benefits in that what are the opportunities what is our government saying how are the industry numbers we will show you all those things then based on that you should be able to make a decision is it for me or not yes or no one or zero there is no point 5 okay if yes go ahead no forget it okay so that's what we expect you to make a decision today what do we want we also want something out of the session we are not doing it free nobody works for free okay it's business so we want you to review us on google after this webinar whatever is your experience about this your webinar good or bad you can just write it transparently on google that's what we expect out of you after that we want you to be in our network we want to grow our network federation is such a big you know platform there are more than 30000 people who are following federation now there are suppliers there are manufacturers there are producers there are wholesalers distributors there are farmers farmers producing company service providers then there are exporters there are bankers there are insurance providers there are logistic partners there are importers there are brokers agents all of them are there on you know facebook 
and they are with us in our facebook group so we expect you to join us on that facebook group and also like our facebook page because we promote we update you on the latest happenings about import export industry what is the government policy what are the changes what are the opportunities what are new schemes you know and uh, our associates also promote their products they also put their requirements buyers on our facebook group so we expect you to join us we also want your network your product we want suppliers we want exporters we want investors we want your you know if somebody is there from overseas market we want to join in hand with them we want to grow our network that's what is federation all about so we just want you to be with us that's the outcome of today's session for us and for you okay now let's go to the topic before starting of jumping onto import export let's talk about what is biggest problem in india why you all people are here more than 50% people are having their own businesses already i'm sure you have you have listed your product means you are doing some business in that you must be trading you must be growing that business i mean you know producing those product you must be trading it and now you are looking forward to expand your business and there are few people who are looking forward to start new businesses that's all fine so what are the common problems we see around in india you can just type it in the chat box please okay right what what are the problem you see around the most let's let's discuss few things then we will understand what is the importance of this industry export import what is the relevance to that so this question is important from that point of view well you can just type a problem whatever you see around in the chat box yes now we can see a lot of problems are there funding is a problem no support is a problem right uh, people are not aware of this right so there are different different problems you must be facing around right so that's true you can just type your problems in the chat box okay great yeah there are people from different different industry and uh, we know that a lot of people are facing challenges in today's situation in india our economy is not doing good rather whole world is in trouble yes okay so yes funding is another problem so i mean that's the biggest problem indians think you know but funding is never a problem if you have a good plan funding is not a problem right so okay finance fine okay so that's a very common problem which everybody thinks it is but we don't think that's a problem right the biggest problem which we see around is unemployment which you see around right why people are unemployed there is such a big population in india 140 crores and not all of them have jobs it's not possible you know india is going through a transformation digitalization and automation have is happening very fast in india and that's resulting into unemployment so why we are discussing unemployment what these people will do all of these people will get into domestic businesses a simple business which many of you might be looking for any simple business with no risk less capital investment high margins <laughs> quick customers you know so those are all just in our dream it never happened like that right so all these unemployed people are looking for simple business so if you are also thinking about simple business then all these people are with you you have to what you have to compete with them you have to fight with them that's a reality and that's what is happening in india today we all are wasting our resources you know and we are just fighting with each other we are not creating new products we are not innovating anything and we are not exploring new markets because we don't know how to do that nobody taught us that right now today we will learn what is the solution for that okay so what option india has instead of fighting among ourselves let's explore global market right so this is what is you know future looks like indian economy need to bounce back by doing more business means what more export we are one of the largest country very soon we will be number 1 in what 
in population, nothing else. <laughs> right. But if you see today, let's say China and India are almost near, I mean, equal in population. But you look at their economy and look at our economy. We are far behind them. China is at least 30 years ahead of us in infrastructure, in knowledge, in technology, you know, in business, in numbers, in everything. What China has thought and taken a decision before 30, 40 years, we are still not able to take that decision today. Our people are still thinking, is it, is it for me? Can I do it? Who will buy my product? I don't have money. So we are, you know, still in that stage. Can you understand this now? You know, China has not thought about this product, this uh, kind of questions. They have made a decision and they have proved on that. And that's why their numbers are the biggest in world today. You know, right. So, but now we know what is the today's situation. Everybody is against China today. So who's next? India. But do we understand this opportunity? And are we really ready for that? Do we understand global standards, global quality? Do we understand packaging? Do we understand numbers? Do we know how to analyze the markets? And do we know how to sell our products internationally? No. We just want what? We just want to sell our product. We just want to be salesman. People just tell, ask me, will you buy my product? Will you get me customer? I don't want to sell. I don't, I can't sell. What you are telling, you just buy my product. That's it. It doesn't happen that way. If we want to grow business, we should learn selling. And before that, we should know marketing. Right. So all these things we will learn today in a simple way. Okay. So let's say now which put is on our mind. That's why we are here today, all of us. So when we are thinking about export, the first thing is location, which we should know. Okay. So how's our location? We all are sitting in India. How's our location? What do you think? What comes to your mind? Right. You can just type your chat boxes in, uh, you know, you can just type your responses in your chat boxes so that we will know. Let's make this session more interactive. What do you think about our location? We are sitting in India. Import export is the business of logistics. We are sitting here and our customer is in overseas uh, in other countries and we have to send our goods to that customer. It means logistics is involved, right? When logistics is there, then how's our location? How far it is? How near it is? How's our infrastructure? All these things come into picture. So what do you think? How's our location? You can just type it in chat box, right? Okay. Hey, that's fine. I'm not asking your city, but in general, how is India's location? Come out of your city now. Come out of your city. Come out of your state. Come out of your <laughs> India now. We have to think or we have to see little beyond India. We have to look at the global data now. Okay. Well, so if you see that, our location is very good. This is our location. Okay. What do you mean by this? Can you tell me what do you mean by this? Excellent. Excellence means what? Just telling that a location is excellent is not, uh, no, it doesn't mean anything. When we are thinking about business, we should know numbers. From that point of view, tell me what do you think? What, is, what comes to your mind? Okay. Well, so if you see this means we have a good coastal line. Right. Uh, there are many countries on the left side and there are many countries on the right side. And all most of the big countries are accessible to us. That is the meaning. OK, now let's go to the next level. If you see, we are surrounded by whom? We are surrounded by these countries. The most populated countries like China, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Gulf countries, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan. They are just around India. What does that mean? China itself is 140 crore people. India is 135 crore people. Others all together are more than 125 crore. So how much is that in total? 400 crore. What does that mean? How many people are there on this planet Earth? 750 crore. It means half of the world is in and around India. What is it? This is the market for us. Right. So 
that is the meaning of our location did you get this point now does it make sense to you does it make sense well yes so this is the market now time has come that we should look at this market otherwise if you see we are just big in population but do we have purchasing power government reports still say that 60 70% india is poor what they will buy we know that only 3 to 4% people pay taxes what are other 96% people doing and how we will grow with such numbers it's very difficult until and unless we explore this market which other countries are doing how china grew china was behind us before 50 60 years indian economy was stronger india was called sone ki chiriya not china but what is the situation today we are struggling right okay so this is the our location benefit okay well so next move forward now we saw the location now let's look at the numbers how are india's export numbers what do you think how much we must have exported okay these are the numbers let's say in 1918 19 we exported worth 331 billion these are the number of merchant export means trading trading number if we consider 1 dollar equal to 70 rupees that approximately comes to be 22 lakh crore it's a it's a big number it's a big number 22 lakh crore right so so if you see that it is a big number and how much is import oh my god import is bigger than export almost one and a half times it is 507 billion dollars which means 34 lakh crore it means india is earning 1 rupee and india is spending 1 and a half rupee it means our economy is in negative and that is called trade deficit and that is the biggest problem of indian economy there is a loan on my head and there is a loan on your head also but we don't care right so in total if you see this merchandise export in total it is worth 56 lakh crore business do you know how many zeros are there on 56 i don't know you know it's such a big business it is already happening our brothers and sisters are already doing this business and these are the their numbers these are the numbers of people who know the system who are taking advantage of that system who are taking benefit of the system and others we are struggling here we are looking for new opportunity and we still don't know where to go right so this is one of the biggest opportunity right 56 lakh crore now these numbers are good very good what is there for us we have to think how can we contribute in this what's our contribution in building india can i earn in dollars so the answer is yes there are a lot of opportunities there is a potential in every industry you saw how big are our number numbers it means it's already happening and numbers are growing every year right and now today because of the world situation everybody is looking forward to india you know and we will see further how our individual industries are doing so definitely there is a chance to contribute in this to grow your business to take your business in international market to earn for yourself and to earn for our country also okay so now here our target should be can i make at least one shipment of let's say 5 lakh rupees that should be our target right one shipment of 5 lakh rupees is it possible yes it is possible many of our associate students have done this many times and that's why we believe that yes this is the way to grow this is the this will only bring bring prosperity to india and to everybody right well so let us see how 
So now let's come back to the topic. How to start now? Yes, India's numbers looks big. Location is also good. Now, from where do I start? Well, so let's see. To start any business, you need a company. To start any international business, you need a company because you need a government license. And government gives license to a company, not to the individual. Right. So every individual in India has an identity card, which is Aadhaar card and PAN card. Based on that, you have to form your company. It might be simple proprietorship company, or it could be private limited, or it could be LLP, or it could be FPC, farmers producer company, if you are from agriculture background. Right. So you have many options depending on your vision, depending on your purpose, your financial capability, um, your further developments, your team. You can choose which type of business you want to establish. Right. Let's say if you start with proprietorship, that is also fine. Many people start proprietorship, which is a one man company and they are doing export worth 100 crores. Nothing will stop you. OK. So you have to do the company formation. After that, you have to take MSME license, which is Udyam license, because all government schemes come through that. Then you will have to open up your bank accounts to handle your dollars. Because international export import business happens in foreign currency. So you need to handle that through your banking system. So bank account is required. After that, digital signature and then GST number. There is no GST on export, but we have to take a GST number for compliance purpose. If you complete one to eight point, then you can apply for the IEC license, importer exporter code. If you go for proprietorship firm in 4000 rupees, you can form your company one to nine. One to nine points in four thousand rupees, and this federation, our federation, Import Export Federation, can help you establish your company from anywhere in the world, in India, in Dubai, in Singapore, in London. We can form a company from here online in any country. Federation is doing that, right? At very reasonable prices. So below is the number. If you have any query, you can call them. The next is when you start your business, how you will reach your customers? Because here customers is sitting overseas. They will not come to your office immediately and see your physical infrastructure, but still they would like to know your product, your uh, address, your location, your capability, your service. So you should have a website to promote your products, to promote your company. A simple one page, two page website is also fine to start with. Let's say we can do that in 7,500 rupees export oriented website, right? Then there are some licenses. RCMC means registration come membership certificate of what of EPC Export Promotion Council, right? So this EPC is established by government of India, and we have to take their membership so that all government benefits we can avail. This is compulsory, right? So for every industry there are different different EPC. So let's say my portfolio is agriculture. Agriculture RCMC comes for seven thousand five hundred. Federation can give you and uh, get you this RCMC in 7,500 rupees. So if you see to start your import export company, these are the basic things you need. 4,000 rupees proprietorship firm, website and your RCMC. So in total, in less than 20,000 rupees, you can form your company and you can you are ready to start your business. On other side, if you consider in domestic businesses, if you want to set up a shop, a simple shop, you know, in a big, a good city, in a good city, how much it will cost? I'm sure it will not cost less than 20 lakh rupees in any tier one, tier two city. At least 20 lakh rupees you will need. And again, after setting up, setting up that shop, you have to wait for two years. Will this business run or not? How will be the market condition? Right. So, contrarily, this business can be started in 20,000 rupees. Registration, basic registrations are sufficient. You can register at your home address. You can start. And you have the opportunity, right? So that's a, how you can start your business. Now, next, sir, we open the company. Now, what to do? You tell us, tell us about that export, right? Yes, we have a lot of interesting things in today's session. So one of them is this exporter's role. What will be your role in this business? The first is that we should get the knowledge of export industry, export business process. How does it happen? How logistics is there? How products is selected? Packaging? How does it uh, happen? 
how custom clearance is done, how shipment is done, all this business knowledge you should have. You know, then as we know, as we just discussed, we have to form the company. Once you form a company, then you will have to select your product. Once you get an export business knowledge, based on that, you will come to know which product to select. Or we can suggest whatever product you have, you start with that. Agriculture or textile, chemical, handicraft, jewelry, you know, or uh, uh, sportswear, fishery, spices, whatever you have. Start with that. It doesn't matter because tomorrow you can change the product. It doesn't, system will not change. Product can be changed. You can export one product, you can export 100 products. It doesn't matter. There is only one license, import export code for all products, for import or export also. Well, so the third point is product selection. Once you select your product, then you should have all numbers of that product. How much that is exported from India last year, last quarter, to which country, at what price? It means you should have a kundali of your business, all numbers of your products. All statistics ready, then that is what is market analysis. Right. If you have one product, then you should know rates in India, which are the top market from where to buy, where to source, what is the landing price, what are then your export shipment expenses, and what is the landing price for your customer overseas. You should be able to quote competitive price. That will only happen when you have a knowledge about the market of your product. And all this market analysis can be done online. There are many websites from where you can get data of any product, where it is going, to which country, at what price, in what quantity, all the things you can get. And based on that, you should take further decisions. Otherwise, you are just, you know, under We have we don't have to do that. We don't have to fire in dark. You know, we should know everything. Business in business, there should not be any assumption. Okay, everything has to be crystal clear. Why we are doing this? Okay, these are the numbers. Based on that, you should take the decision. Okay, so after market analysis means what? Once you see that, okay, this is the potential five countries for your product, then who are the customers there that you need to find? And you know that all customers, all importer, exporter, suppliers, buyers are sitting online. If you want to buy something, where will you find? First, on google it means online so as we said you have to form a company and then you have to um have a website so that customer will find you you need to be visible to your customer customer will not come at your come to your home okay customer is already there we need to be visible to them okay so that's how you have to identify the buyer find the buyer and then open a dialogue with them send them proposals take their requirements and then Offer them quotations, the best price. Offer them samples. Once they like the sample, then they will negotiate. On what? They will negotiate on payment, on pricing of your product, on packaging of your product, on quantity of your product, on number of uh, dates, shipment of your product, then payment terms, delivery terms. They will negotiate on all those things. There are different different terms in international business. Once you agree on that, bo once both the party agree on that, then you will form an agreement, official agreement. Then you will take required insurances. If there is an advance, let's say, to be paid by the customer, customer will pay, will pay you the advance. And then you start the procurement of your goods or you start the manufacturing. Then you do the packaging and you will then send the goods to other country. That's the export shipment, right? While doing the shipment, at every stage, you will do documentation. There are different, different documentations. Once you do that, once you do the shipment, once you do all documentation, then you will get the remaining payment from your customer through your banking system. And that's it. That export cycle is completed. So this is our role. This is what we need to do for every shipment. Let it be any product. Product doesn't matter. It's the same standard, same terminology, same rules, regulations for every product. Right. Okay. So this is the exporter's role. Even if you are importing something, it's a similar activity. Your product is coming from exporter to importer. It's the same thing applies to that. Same terminology, same industry. Okay. Well, so this after exporter's role. Now let's see. Okay, we want to start the export flow. 
from where we need to export we need to export from ports export happens through sea export happens through air export happens through railway export also happens through road so major of major of export happens through ocean sea so these are india major seaports now there are people from different different states in this industry in this webinar today there are people from rajasthan gujarat maharashtra kerala tamil nadu andhra kolkata so you will see most of the states have one port each so india has a very good infrastructure world class ports such a big such a long coastal line so we should take advantage of that right so export will happen from this port okay now let's move little further and now let us understand how does this export happen so remember this diagram a very important thing right now we will understand how export is done let us say we are sitting here exporter right we have a factory here or we have a our um warehouse whatever okay then we have our company as we said you should have a company proprietorship or private limited whatever then you should have a ic license import export code license that is must this thing some must then what we'll do you will do the marketing of your product marketing is the engine of your product once you do the marketing you will get requirements once you get requirement you will offer better pricing to your customers once both the party negotiate and agree on something that buyer will give you purchase order what he will give you purchase order right right once he get a give you purchase order what he will give we will give him estimate what will be the bill for that order that is called pro forma invoice that is called pro forma invoice ni yeah. in that pro forma invoice we will mention product product packaging product details you know product pricing quantity amount in dollars payment terms delivery terms all condition our exporter's name importer's name my banking details everything is there on the pro forma invoice and payment terms are also there let's say if we have a payment terms of let's say 50% advance like let's say 50% advance and 50% credit if such is the payment term then what then what then customer should acknowledge this pi and he should pay us advance 50% right so he will acknowledge the pi and then he will pay us 50% advance again that pi right let's say here he paid a 50% advance after that what we will do exporter then exporter will go to the market and he will procure the raw material then he will process it manufacturing it or buy it whatever he want to do he will do that depending on the product he will do the packaging okay he will do or he will get it done he will do the packaging of his goods which need to be sent well after that where do we send the product from where export happens what we saw from port we have to send our cargo this is called cargo our goods are called, called cargo to the port but before port there is one facility which is called cfs container freight station where all these containers are kept because our cargo will be kept in container and then container will be kept on the vessel okay so where are these container kept they are kept in a cfs container freight station also who's there in cfs in cfs there is a custom officer who is a government employee who is a government employee he is there who he checks everything okay you want to export something where is your license where is the permission where is your cargo where is your documents is it correct is it allowed is pricing correct all the things he will check and then he will give you the permission for your container to export that is called custom clearance who does that custom officer well so after your container get clearance by custom officer of india that container moves to the port 
port port is the like a like a st stand where there are different different vessels they are there which which are going to different different countries so your container this port authority will you know uh, put your container or on board your container on the right vessel to the country to which you want to send your container they will board that container on that vessel okay so so this vessel when they receive a container they give you the receipt they give you the receipt the shipping line gives you the receipt okay we received your container for export and this is the proof so and then this vessel sail sail from our port sail towards another country's port okay so then this container is unloaded by this port authority and that is kept in their cfs their cfs container freight station so this is a port in our country and this is a port in destination country so this is the called our country port is called loading port and this is called destination port okay that is how container moves okay now what happens to the container which has reached to the cfs in other country that importer who has given us a order and who has imported the container there is a obligation on him to release that container legal obligation because he has ordered the goods okay so he has to go and do the custom clearance for that custom clearance what he needs he needs original documents original document and who has document we have the document we are exporter we have the receipt okay so after this container moves away from the port we get all the documents who exporter then what we have to do with that document we have to verify all the document if their name is correct address is correct numbers are correct we have to verify them right after that we have a bank account we are exporter we are a businessman so we have our account in a one bank international bank right so we have to submit all these document to the bank and we have to request bank look this is the purchase order and this is the i am exporter this is the importer and i need to send document to my importer and his bank is this so request you to send this document to him okay so bank is a our partner bank will verify all the document and then bank will send this document to the importer's bank that is the bank's role to process the import export document okay so this importer's bank like we are a customer of our bank importer is the customer customer of his bank when when the document reaches the importer's bank that bank will verify the document and they will call importer they will call him sir we have received your documents in our bank you can please collect this document but before that but before that you have to pay us $5000 let us say we got a purchase order of how much let's say $10000 here which order which we got was worth $10000 out of that 5000 he paid 50% advance how much is remaining $5000 so bank will tell him sir your document has arrived you can take this document but before that we have to pay your bill so that importer has to go physically to the bank he has to accept all the terms conditions all the papers whatever he has to sign there he has to pay the bills then only bank will handle the document to him right otherwise if he doesn't come or he doesn't pay bank will never give the document to importer and then who's the owner of that container exporter because we have exported so so that control in is our hand okay so once this importer receive the document what he will do he will give his document to his custom agent and he will apply for custom clearance to his custom officer right like we have a custom officer in our country so he also has a custom department and custom officer in his country so he will apply for the custom clearance then custom clear, uh, officer custom officer will do the assessment and he will tell him to file the taxes and duty he will present him a bill which importer has to clear once importer clear this bill he can take the container the container will be released and he can take it to his warehouse and then he can sell and he can do the further business okay now what happens to that 5000 dollar which has he has deposited in his bank 
that bank transfer that to our bank right and our bank transfer that to our account that is how this shipment export shipment is done right did you get this well so this is how we send the document to importer and this is how we receive the money we receive the dollars in our account right okay well this is a simple export cycle this is the system there are two two companies import export companies there are two countries there are two countries custom departments involved shipping line is involved there are two international banks which are involved so this business happens through a system there is a control on this system so if you know this system and if you work according as per the system then you are safe there are very least chances to get stuck okay whatever cases you might have heard good or bad about this industry mostly bad happens because people doesn't know the system well today i just give you overview of the system but there are many aspects in this many different different things in this you which you need to know the documentation part the banking part terms conditions lc you know uh, receipt payment terms negotiation delivery terms all those things are there what is the quotas role what is custom officers role what is the shipping lines loan uh, role what is importers role what is banks role once you understand all these things then it becomes easy right so if you see the domestic business there is no security no such system we we are on our own even if there is a neighbor who is not paying your bills what will you do you can't touch him but here if you work with the system if your importer is not paying you then still you can you know put a case on him or you can take a action or there are some other systems which will compensate you if you work as per the system and if something unfortunate happens something happens then but still government of india is with us and they are offering us insurances insurances for your business risk any kind of risk what else you need you just need to know the system and you just need to know how to take benefit of that insurance okay so there is a risk in every business so there is a risk in this business also but our job is that to manage that risk to learn how to manage that risk right okay so this is the basic of export cycle okay even if you are importing it's the same terminology same process only thing is that now you are sitting on the importer side and goods are coming from other country to us in india maybe from china taiwan japan or korea or germany it's the same procedure exporter is sitting there he has a factory but yeah now you know while importing what things you need to consider what steps that um, cargo the goods will cross how custom clearance will happen in his country how it will happen in my country what is my role what is his role what is my right what is his right okay what is system saying so this system import export system is same across the globe whatever countries are there in the world all of them are following the same system custom clearance happens in the same way in all countries same documents same standard same terminology okay now now you you see once you understand this business whole world is accessible to you the whole world becomes your market right that's the potential in this industry in this knowledge okay well so let's see um next now so there are some questions but um it's difficult to answer all the questions we will take some questions at the end of the session but let us deliver what we want to deliver first okay that's the export cycle now as we discussed there are many payment terms are you giving are is customer paying advance or are you uh, providing or su supplying him on credit or again document there are different different payment terms different different delivery terms i can give him goods in my factory also i can deliver goods till indian port or till his country's port or i can deliver goods in his warehouse also there are logistic companies we have to hire their services but there are different different terms which we need to learn okay there is a different language of import export which we need to learn then there are documents 
there are at least 15 documents, but out of that, hardly four or five documents we need to prepare. Exporter. Other documents are there which get generated to the system. We just need to read them. We should know what is in that. Is it right or wrong? That's what we should know. Okay. Then custom clearance. What is CHA role? What is freight forwarder's role? Freight forwarder is the person or shipping company who takes your container from one country to other country. And custom officer. Who does your custom clearance? Who gives you the permission for export? What is his role? So we need to understand their role, their activities, because we are dealing with them. And the last is once we are doing the shipment, how to get the money? That's the most important thing. How to receive payments in dollars in our bank account safely. Right. So these terms, conditions, and things you will have to learn in detail. Okay. Okay. So that's the export. Uh, in short, now we will look at our government. We understood the system. Now let's look at when we start any business, we always look at, okay, what is our government saying? Are they supporting? Are they asking us to do this kind of things? Yes. Let's see. So our government is very positive on export. What we saw, our import is $507 billion and export is $331 billion. Means India is in negative. We have a trade deficit. So to reduce that trade deficit, government will take measures. What measures they will take? The first measure they will take is to reduce the import. To reduce the import. And the second measure they will take to promote the export. Okay. So these are all things government of India is doing to promote the export. As I asked you, what is the problem you have? 50% people said finance, which is never a problem actually, but they said finance. And government of India understand this mentality. We have everything at our home. We have a car, we have a property, we have a house, we have a bank balance, we have insurances, we have gold, which is kept in a locker. But when it comes to business, we say, we don't have money, sir. Finance is a problem. That's the kind of mindset we have. Right. So government says, okay, if you, if you know import export business and if you get a purchase order from overseas client and if you don't have funding, we can fund you. So there is a fund funding option available against the purchase order. There are different, different government schemes against which you can apply and you can get finance without mortgage also. It is possible. Of course, that decision is a bank decision. And bank will always see your background, your profile, your tax returns, and all those things. So anyway, we have to prepare for that. Not today. If you learn and if you start, maybe in a few months, you will be ready for that. Right. So important is to know all these things and to start working in that direction. That is very important. The first thing is that government supported financially. The second thing is when government gives you funding against the purchase order, that is the kind of loan. It is. It means. When there is a loan, there will be interest. So government is giving us subsidized interest rate. So government of India is saying, okay, if you are exporting, you are building nation. You are doing such a great job. So if commercial interest rate is 10%, then we will offer you minus 5%. Means 10% minus 5, that equals to 5%. So you may get export funding at merely 5% per annum. Can you imagine how big is this benefit? So all these big business houses which you see in NSE, BSE or other big companies, they are taking advantage of the system. They're not doing business from, you know, by putting money from their pocket. They have invested initially to learn the business, to get experiences, to prove some numbers. Once you prove the numbers, the whole system is available for us. Right. And now they are doing business with the government's money or bank's money. Right. Third is what? Benefit exemption. Go, you are doing export. Government want to give you some privilege. Exemption from tax. Only one business which has an exemption from GST. That's export. In India, there is no GST on export. If you are paying some GST on some product, government, can, government will pay you 100% refund. Right. So there is no GST. That is a bonus for exporter because you are taking so much effort. That's bonus for you. You keep it for yourself. Fourth is risk. We are very afraid of business. 
what will happen people will cheat me i don't know these things will you help me so these kind of things are there because we don't know we are not aware of the system we don't take knowledge that's why we ask such questions okay whatever but still there are chances that some incidents may happen there are some things beyond our control like natural calamity might be there may may come or some other financial crisis may happen in that case how secure is the business it is 100% secure government of india is offering us security government of india is offering us insurance for every shipment provided you follow the system everything is in track all documents are right correct prepared as per the system then there is zero risk zero absolutely right then next let's say number 5 government knows indians mentality where is subsidy <laughs> if you want to start new business what we what we do what we do we call ca sir which business has the more subsidy okay then prepare that project plan and we will start that business <laughs> that's what we do many of us but we have to do away with such things government of india is saying that yes we will offer you we are offering you subsidy on 8000 products what more you want now there is a order of funding is there subsidized interest rate is there there is no taxes there is the insurance support and moreover government is putting money in your pocket boss please do the export because you are building nation we want dollars we want to buy uh, oil for your fuel for your car we need dollars so we need to export right so export is the biggest thing government want we need dollars so there are such 18 schemes for exporters by government of india and these are few of them right so this is how government of india is supporting us let's see more then you will ask sir if you are telling us such big things it looks it looks nice to hear then why people are not joining this industry that's true i am also late by 15 years in this industry that's what i think i regret because no one told me there is absolutely zero awareness about this industry in india i did mba not my prof my professor didn't tell me my businessman other businessman whom i was following they didn't tell me politicians whom whom i was following they didn't tell me my family is clueless about this my friends are clueless about this there is absolutely no one in the world who you know who could tell me about this business such a, is our environment that's why people are not coming into this the second is people are afraid they think that this is complicated now you see today gst has made our life simple and against that gst people had people were agitating before 2 years but now they have understood the system it's very easy you can file your taxes online you can file everything online transparent easy all taxes are you know uh, moved and only gst is there simple life now people think it's simple because they now know that that is the same case in import export from outside it looks complicated but once you learn it's not that complicated okay it need huge money that's a big hurdle in uh, that's a big block in everybody's mind money is not true in the next slide we will learn how much money you need to start the export right the fourth one we discussed that risk risk is there in every business but we need to manage the risk we need to learn that and government of india is supporting us to manage the risk need to be expert in english we all are here india is a english speaking country most of us know basic english very well that is more than sufficient our neighbor china do you think they speak better english than us no but you see their numbers way ahead so english is never a barrier more than english you should know business language your product your customer his need your branding you know your pricing your delivery on time delivery that is more important that's how business happens okay so all these misconceptions are there in market that's why people are confused are scared about this business but that's not true these are all false okay well now the next one point we were supposed to discuss about the investment how much investment is required 
for this export business. So I will tell you three simple cases. Let us say we got an order of wheat, which is the very basic commodity in India. We all of us eat chapati, eat wheat, right? So let's say we got a order of wheat from let's say uh, Dubai. Okay. So in which container wheat goes? Let's say 20 feet container. So how much wheat can be loaded in 20 feet container? Let us say 24 metric ton means 24,000 kilo. So what is the today's rate in, of wheat? Do you know? Let's say 17 rupees or 18 rupees per kg maximum. Wheat rate. Right. Okay. Now let's say from where we, from where to where we have to send it. Let's say we have to send it from Mumbai to Dubai. We have to send from Mumbai to Dubai. Okay. Now let's see the numbers. So this 24 metric ton, if you multiply by let's say 18 or 20 rupees, that comes to be almost 4 lakh 50 thousand rupees. Well. So how much money it take it uh, takes for custom clearance and for shipping? Let us say for 20 feet container, it's maximum let's say 80,000 rupees for Gulf country. Let's say for Dubai, 80,000 rupees. All your custom clearance and your freight. Well, how much is the profit? Let's say let's keep one rupee per kilo, which is a fair uh, fair profit, 24,000 rupees per container. But let's consider 30,000 rupees. That's the profit we expect. Okay, how much it comes? In total, five lakh sixty thousand rupees. Well, five lakh sixty thousand rupees. So this is what you need to start with. Is it much? No. As we discussed, to start a shop in any city, you need at least twenty lakh rupees. So here you can start a business in twenty thousand rupees, and you can send your first shipment in five lakh rupees also. That is possible. And there are many commodity, many products in this budget right that's the potential if you think that okay five lakh rupees more, more for me you can you can shake hand with someone maybe two people can do that you know two people can do one container that's also possible and your investment will fall fall to 50 percent two and a half lakh rupees maybe two lakh rupees right now, if, if we are not ready to take 2 lakh rupee risk, then how can we do the business? Then it's better to sit at the home and to work for someone else. That's what we advise. Right? Such a big potential this business has. And you can start with such low investment also. That's the beauty of this business. Right? Okay. That's one option by C. Because most of the export happens through C. And uh, these are the wheat kind of commodities are traded in a huge volume. You know? And uh, that's the uh, that's the numbers for them. Okay, let's see one more option by air. Let us see. There are many commodity, many products which are exported by air. One of them is let's say chili, which everyone eats. Chili or handicraft or Ayurvedic medicine or jewelry or textile. You consider anything, maybe some electronics items also. It's possible to send by export uh, air. Let's say you got. Electronics item is there. You got 100 numbers order. One item is for, let's say, 400 rupees. And 100 items total comes to be 40,000 rupees. That is also an export. Okay. Let us say chili. When you say chili, you get an order of, let's say, one ton. It means 1,000 kg. Okay. Chili, green chili, fresh. So, what is the today's rate of chili? Let's say 40,000, 40 rupees per kg. So how much is the raw material cost? 40,000 rupees, one ton. Then what is the cost for shipping, custom clearance and freight? If you consider Dubai, that is around 50 rupees, 60 rupees or 70 rupees per kg. That is the logistic cost per kg. I mean, I say, na, uh, product is 40 rupees and uh, uh, shipment is costlier than that. So total one ton, will cost the custom clearance and shipping cost will be let's say 60,000 rupees and how much profit we can consider let's say we consider 20 percent let's say 20,000 rupees profit we consider okay so total is how much 1 lakh 20,000 rupees so it means you can do one complete shipment in 1 lakh rupee also air shipment 
but generally this kind of product you should get regular orders chili people get contract for 30 days 60 day 90 day and they export every day there are many exporters and you can see all our uh, international airports every day are taking such a big number of you know, vegetables and fruits in a big number okay well one more option we will see let's say there is a friend of mine who's uh, in london he has a restaurant there and we supply him atta maida rice and one day he asked abhijit i need utensils for my hotel he gave me the list i went to demart and i bought them that cost me 25000 then i called a shipping line or that uh, courier company because this i wanted to share, uh, share, send through air so that person came me he gave me the quotation of 10000 rupees right so after that i added 5000 rupees marginal profit because demart is very close to my office it doesn't uh, you know not much effort i just went there bought it kept it my office i just packed it in boxes that's it my consignment is ready okay so how much this comes to be 40000 rupees so this is also a form of export so there is absolutely no limit no minimum or no maximum limit for this business you can start with 25000 rupee shipment also and you can do a 25 crore shipment also everything is possible depend on the product now we are talking about the chili you can talk about the diamond that will be in crores in millions right so i want to remove that block from your head that it needs huge money it is possible people are now getting orders for ayurvedic medicine homeopathy medicine uh, that mask you know some um, uh, health equipments pharmaceutical equipments small small consignments are there in fact we are also buying something many things from overseas from online e-commerce portal like alibaba you buy something it comes from other country you don't you won't even know how it came but it is coming through this import export cycle because there it is coming through custom clearance who is doing custom clearance that company who sold you they are doing the custom clearance okay now the time has come that we all india learn these things and start marketing promoting selling our products overseas that's the next era okay well so these are some case studies we discussed okay so there is one question now i hope that uh, you got a high level overview of export cycle there is one question on your uh, screen you can just answer that please so that we know if you are getting this and then we can um, go to the next topic well yes great great yes most of the people are saying that yes uh, 83% people are saying that just yes, they got a high level overview of export cycle so thank you very much that's my job so i am um we just wanted to give you the confidence this is how it is and you can do it okay now we will understand how to start okay well so thank you for your answer uh, almost 75% people are saying yes they got a good overview and 25% are saying yes they need more information yes of course if you decide to get into this industry you will need more information for sure right yes so thank you for your poll okay and uh, let's look at the next things okay now let's look at what is our government direction we saw india's location india's numbers how export happens all these things are there but what is our government saying we saw government scheme also but where are the opportunities and where are the numbers show us some proof right well so here are here it is so our prime minister said now make for world should also be a key slogan like make in india since last 5 6 years you we are hearing make in india program which is very successful now our prime minister is saying we should say make for world the time has come right he also said how long we will export raw material and import finished goods time has come that we put this cycle to an end india must now manufacture everything it consumes and not just that export to the world as we grow now you see how big is the potential we ourselves are 140 crore country and then everybody is looking 
forward to India for supply. We have a very good relationship with all countries in the world. India, they trust us. But are we capable? Even if we get big orders, are we capable to deliver that? That's a question mark. Now that is why this effort, government also want, and they also ask us to conduct this kind of program so often. DGFT, APEDA, other people, they appreciate these things. They did programs with us jointly, this kind of webinar, right? So this is what is the need of our, for India, okay? So India will be a top exporting country, definitely. We have that potential. And our export target is $1 trillion. We saw how much is our merchant export? $331 billion. So how much target our government has kept? $1 trillion. Means triple. We have to triple the export. Tripling the export is not that easy. We have to you know, prepare for that. We have to create new exporters. We have to create new infrastructure. We have to build new ports. We have to build new roads, new warehouses, new cold storage, new railway, new CFS, new products, new packaging facility. Everything we have to work on. But at least our government means we all have set this target and all our policies are made accordingly. That is why government made a policy for export, foreign trade policy, and they have announced 18 schemes to promote the export. 18 schemes to promote the export. That is the need of our economy. That is the need of our country. Okay. If you see, in last six, seven months, everything is in trouble. All countries are in trouble. Whole world is in trouble. Our numbers were also down initially, but our recovery happened very fast. Very fast. So who are the leading sectors in export who are back on track? The first is pharmaceutical. Numbers are skyrocketing. Then medical and diagnostic equipment, then textile, then agriculture and processed food. If you see roti, kapda, makan, it's the same thing. First is healthcare, then second is textile. We wear the clothes. Everybody wear, we wear the clothes. Even if they are ill, they will wear the clothes. Even if the, there is a mask that is made from the cloth. And then agri, we eat. So roti, kapda, makan, basic of business. Okay, so these are the leading sectors, pharmaceutical, medical, textile, agriculture, processed food, plastics, chemicals, electronics. These sectors are growing. And I'm sure all of you, whatever products you are there, you mentioned, they are, they fall in these categories only, right? That is the potential. Above that, beyond that, government of India is suggesting exporters to adapt following strategy. What they said to focus on to focus on countries which are providing demand stimulus like US, UK and many other advanced and emerging markets because they are rich country, because they have money, because they have given a stimulus package to their people. They can buy, they can purchase, they have a purchasing power. So focus on those countries. Direct statement by our ministry. We have to keep our ears and eyes open to learn this and we have to act on this. Government will not do the business. We have to do the business. They will make the policy favorable to us, right? The second strategy is explore countries having anti-China, high anti-China sentiment led by US, Europe, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Now we know these are all big economies, the top six, seven economies in the world. And all of them have gone against China now. And we have very good relationship with all of them. Our biggest market is US, number wise. So all of them are looking forward to us. So we have that opportunity for next five, 10 years. There will be tremendous growth in India. You know, if you don't do, these companies will come and they will set up factories in our country. Or they will also go to our competitors like Philippines and Indonesia. They are also preparing themselves and they already have started. Right. So we also need to you know, come out. We also need to gear up. And we need to prepare to take up this opportunity. Well, so this is the statement directly by the government of India. Now, where is the proof? What are the numbers? What we just discussed? If you see this, in July 2020, our export numbers are back almost 90% in many sectors. Right. So that is a that shows the potential in India. We have a lot of resources. We have 
excess many things we have sugar we have milk we have largest livestock we have all vegetables fruits we have minerals we have pulses you know we have we are largest one of the largest cotton producing country we have english speaking talent we have many things so there is a potential but we need to sell that we need to market that well another as we saw agriculture sector the current agriculture export is 38 billion dollars and our government target is 100 billion dollars and who are the leading sectors in that in under agriculture dairy product rice non basmati rice basmati rice wheat pulses meat and poultry all these sectors are doing well Be because people eat this and uh, they are looking forward to india right so there is a potential in every sector there are some cases like you know people will now some people were asking how is the market is there any opportunity this is the opportunity the in a problem there is an opportunity india was not producing these products before 6 7 months all this covid related corona virus related test kit and pp kit and mask we were not producing but when this problem happened many businessmen took this as an opportunity in 3 months they set up their factory their shop everything is ready and they started producing and in 3 4 months they fulfill all india's need and they produce excess then government gave them permission to export initially it was banned but when government saw no we have excess products now we started supplying to the world and the numbers are speaking about them these many products we exported vtm kit 23 million pcr kit 10 million this is what our brothers and sister did in this problematic covid time if they could do it why can't we let it be any industry we can also do it okay well another simple industries like choir we know how many farmers and how many workers are dependent on this industry one of the largest employment producing industry choir industry their numbers are all time high in this covid time because now people want natural product every world has become health conscious they are avoiding chemicals and other things but they want this kind of natural product and india has ample of them and this is the proof numbers are all in high right so who got the benefit the people who know the system people who know the market people who are taking some risk people who are taking some initiative they are getting benefit right and others are sitting at home looking waiting for the opportunity it will never come we have to start and grab the opportunity well okay so these are the proof that what's happening in the industry currently right so now we will understand did you get a do you think now that you should export did you get some confidence about exporting which we are trying to give you today well there is one question on your screen you can just answer that yes thank you yes i mean most of the people are saying yes they should export so thank you very much that's what our country needs and uh, that's what we should do and it's doable it is easy we can do it well so thank you for your uh, answer now let us see we saw india's number what about our industry and our product so i will now tell you from where to get how to do market analysis first we will always see the india's number then we will drill down to the our industry number then we will drill down to our product numbers okay that's how you should do the analysis so whenever i start i always look at the data as a whole india market where are we exporting the most so this is the list of top 9 countries you can get all countries 100 200 300 all countries you can get numbers you know but let's see the top 25 which i will focus on okay the biggest is usa then uae gulf country then china then hong kong singapore King, uh, united kingdom netherland germany bangladesh so these are the top 9 country which with whom we are doing the business whatever big numbers are there they are the big contributor okay so 
Now you have to think, do we have any connection in any of these countries? Do we have a friend, relative, colleague, anybody? You have to start exploring that now. You know, from your business point of view. Okay, well. So after this, let's come to the India's numbers. What we saw already in numbers, this is the graph. This is the chart. Export number, merchandise trade, export, import. What is the trade balance? The new service industry. What is the export? What is the import? What is the trade balance? Okay. So now let's say we all will focus on the first block, $330 billion merchandise export because we all are merchant, merchant traders. We will not get into manufacturing initially. We will trade. We will buy for product from someone and we will export that. So we are merchant exporter. So these are our numbers, $331 billion. And government want to do how much? $1 trillion. That's why all those 18 policies to support the exporter. Now, I will drill down on this $331 billion. I will try to understand which are the leading sectors. So, these are the leading sectors. All this data, all these statistics is available. Okay. Agriculture, chemical, engineering, electronics, gems and jewelry, leather industry, marine means fishery, pharmaceutical and textile. India's top nine leading sectors in export. Right. So I'm sure your products will fall in these categories also. Right. If you see by value, the, the biggest is engineering. Then the second is chemicals because these are raw material for many industries. Okay. Third one is what? Surprisingly, the third one is gems and jewelry, $40 billion. So you can see in Krishi Pradhan, India, gems and jewelry is export number are bigger than agriculture numbers. And we call ourselves Krishi Pradhan country. We haven't done any work actually. We are still doing traditional farming and uh, that's why we are suffering. Okay, the third number is gems and jewelry. Fourth is then agriculture, $38 billion. Then fifth one is textile, $38 billion. That is also good industry. Then fifth one is pharmaceutical. Then electronics, next one. After electronics, then there is the marine industry and then leather industry. In leather industry also, there are many skilled workers. You know that Agra, Kanpur, Mumbai, Dharavi, and many other uh, you know, city have good, we have good leather because we have large livestock. So our leather industry is also good. These are leading nine sectors. Okay. Now let's say my portfolio is agriculture. So what I will do, I will click on agriculture and I will drill down. I would like to know which are the products which are getting exported under agriculture sector. I'm interested in that. And I want to see if my product is there. That is what I am looking for. Once I drill down on agriculture, this list you can see. These are the top products which are getting exported. Latest data, last quarter. Which one is the top most? Basmati rice. Of course, India is one of the uh, largest basmati rice producing country. Our rice is very popular. It's costly also. So Basmati rice is number one. Then non must Basmati rice. There are many poor countries also, like Africa. They can't, they don't want Basmati rice, but they want normal rice. 25 rupee kg rice kind of thing. So there is a big market for that rice also. Then meat, then onions, then other processed vegetables, cereals, pulse, jaggery, processed fruits, vegetables, you know, juices, pulp, alcoholic beverages, grapes, dairy products. Many products are there. These are top 10, 20 products. Their quantity, you can see their export numbers also. These numbers you should have about your product. Let's say I'm a farmer. My father is a farmer. I saw onion on the fourth number. We produce onion. My farmer produces onion. And we were not happy with the pricing. And we were doing irritation last year. You know, how foolish I was. And on this, this is the on fourth number it means it is getting exported so we farmers were producing it and we are selling it in local market and then we were crying foul and then we were doing the agitation but we didn't know this is the further thing we should export that in international market because government was offering all this facility subsidy how much was subsidy last year on onion 10 percent so if you export container worth five five lakh 
government used to put 50000 rupees in your pocket we don't get that much margin in domestic business you can imagine how much this exporter who know the system must have earned in those time and that is why our onion reached 100 rupees also our farmers benefited out of, out of that so my family problem my farmers problem is solved through export we got higher pricing right so this is how you analyze your product numbers quantity and dollars once you drill down this you can get month wise chart that's one option or i'm more interested in knowing okay we are india is exporting onions worth this many crore 1000 crore to which country we are sending it that's what i'm interested in right so i will click on that onion and then it will show me okay these are the top 10 countries for your product this is the quantity we exported to that country in this year and this is what value we got out of that rupees in lakhs in crore the biggest is bangladesh just next to us malaysia uae sri lanka nepal saudi qatar kuwait oman vietnam all countries are near india you tell me wherever you are in india how much time it take to reach the delhi by flight three hours and you fly to dubai how much time it will take three hours only but we never looked at it from that point of view we never explored these countries from that business point of view we just go there for tourism and that's why we are here <laughs> whatever okay so now time has come that this is the big market for us uae's number are so high because they are re-exporting also they are importing it and they are supplying to other gulf countries also right so now what i will do i will figure out one country out of this i will focus on that okay i have a friend in dubai let's target dubai right then i will choose a country and then i will start finding customers who is buying this currently that's the next question we don't have to create new customer we can't we have to find out who is buying this and federation can help you in that that's what our job is well okay that's how you do the analysis of your product there are different different kind of analysis like okay let's say i selected my product uh, onion i want to know who are the top countries so these are the top countries their volume how much we exported in total and how much we exported to malaysia bangladesh to each country so all numbers statistics all everything we can get everything we can get right that's the market analysis so for finding the customers you need to have product knowledge product pricing you should have the best price in your hand for your product then you can seal the deal okay so you should also know the industry how it is traded in the industry what is the credit cycle payment terms what is the logistic where it is available from where it is uh, exported all this current happening you need to know a bit right anyway you can do export from any port that's not a problem but when you talk about any product or commodity then that will be available in specific area then you have to consider the logistics the nearest port and all the things so that industry knowledge you need to get okay then you can negotiate with your customers on the pricing then you start promoting your product and company in overseas market on google on social media because customers are sitting there only right there are many techniques for online and offline marketing through this marketing you build your network network of supplier logistic partners importers brokers agent colleagues exporters and competitors you build a network through that network you have to get your customers you have to win their trust you have to prove yourself then they will give you the order nobody will buy from unknown people so first thing is you need to get yourself visible you know, talk to your customer and know each other that's the starting point then at least you will know okay, what is his need he will say yes or no forget it there are hundreds of customers let you go it doesn't matter but you start talking to them then only you will understand what's happening in that market what is their need what they're asking for right well only sitting at home and selling one uh, trying to sell our product we are not salesman it will never happen okay and then last you should be able to offer best price you should know what is the price of your protein market let's say i am trading in onion so i get a rate of onion from 10 market 10 districts every day in india likewise i also get 
rate from other countries every day. I know what is onion rate in Dubai, in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Sri Lanka, in Qatar, Oman. I know every day because that's my product. So we have developed this network, this system. Uh, we have found this group, system, social media, and we have extracted those numbers. And now, by setting this network, we get that information every day, which keeps us in a better position to negotiate with our buyer because we have knowledge about his market, what, uh, how much he's buying and how much he's selling. I know. Okay. So that confidence you should have about your product. Then it is easy. Then you can seal the deal with your customer. Okay. Well. So that is all about export. Now let us look at the opportunities. So we already discussed the leading sectors like pharmaceutical, automobile sector is also good, vehicles, clothing, accessories, another big sector. Then um, cereals, fish, cotton, textile industry, meat and coffee, tea, spices. So these are all products which are listed here, 10 products, categories of products, I would say, which have net positive. It means their export is very high than import. Okay, well, now we can do the different kind of analysis. So let's say handicraft. There are many people who are from this industry, handicraft. There are some people who make wooden art. There are some people who make metal art. There are some people who make stone art. There are some people who make textile art, you know. So this industry is one of the biggest industry which government gives importance to because this creates labor, this creates employment, and our numbers are also good. So you should have this kind of analysis of your industry. We are just telling you the example. Let's say then once I drill down, this kind of analysis I should have. Let's say in last quarter, how are the numbers? Which products in my industry got exported? Let's say in handicraft industry, then art, metal, woodenware, hand printed textile, embroidery textile, shawls, zari, uh, goods, imitation jewelry, a very popular product, agarbatti, which we you know use at our home also that is also getting exported and other miscellaneous handicap these are actual numbers so if you want to work in any industry in domestic international market so this kind of analysis data statistics you should have before you okay so this all analysis we can get our federation can help you in getting this this is also an opportunity what is this this is cow dung gober export this also get exported you know because now people burn that in our some holistic you know puja havan all those things so this is getting sold like hot cakes on usa amazon so this is getting exported so if this has an opportunity for export why can't your product your product will be better than this i'm sure right so we need, we need to get that attitude, we need to get that perspective that our product can also be sold in overseas market. You need to reach the customer, you need to promote them, you need to sell them, you need to understand the system. It will happen. Okay. Other industries like gems and jewelry, we saw their numbers are on third, $40 billion. So under that, these are the products, cut and polished diamonds. Colored gemstones, these are artificial diamonds. Gold jewelry, silver jewelry, imitation jewelry, platinum jewelry, articles of gold, silver. This kind of all these things are getting exported. $40 billion. All Gujarat, Mumbai, all this. There are many people. How much they will be earning? Right. So the next textile, very popular industry for Maharashtra, for um, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, are very good in this industry. Right. So if you see, and then again, Punjab, Ludhiana, that belt is also very good because they produce, we all produce on uh, cotton, right? So there is one sec section, sector under uh, industry, this textile industry that is called RMG, ready-made garment. That is also very popular. You know? Now, we have to make this Make in India brand popular in the world. And these are the articles which are getting exported. T-shirts, men's and boys' shirts, cotton shirts, baby garments, you know, other dresses, synthetic materials all the things so what we are trying to tell you that this kind of industry analysis you have to do for your industry and your product okay based on that you should take your further decision and then agriculture which is my portfolio so we conducted this kind of uh, 
programs with our partners like DGFT and other, you know, uh, this Indo-Israel um, agro industry chamber. They are our partners. We promote this uh, industry. That's my portfolio also. And we conduct this kind of workshops in Pune, Mumbai. That's my hometown. So we do a lot of this kind of workshops here to educate people, to educate farmer, to educate a farmer producing company, to educate suppliers, to give them confidence that they can also start exporting. And government also joined, had, uh, joined hands with us. They also promote our program. So this is an, um, another opportunity. Um, like we, we post such opportunities on Facebook. If you see on our Facebook page, we keep on posting such opportunities. So this is one news which our government of India has you know, um, given. They have given the list of products. When in March, at the beginning of lockdown, and they ask exporters to focus on this products, right? All these mostly agriculture products, um, and then a perfumery, and then pharmaceutical. And they also said these are the major markets. So what else government should do now? They are making a good policy. They are having a lot of schemes. They are also giving you the numbers, statistics, analysis. They are giving you the data. They are give, telling you which market to focus on. What else we, we expect now? They will not come at your home and will say, okay, jag jao, we please wake up now. We have to think ourselves about our business, about our industry. There are so many opportunities and we have to take them. Well, if we don't take them, others will take them and then we will lose that. Okay. So all this analysis, what we saw in the last session, last section, we federation prepare a MBBS report, market and buyer business search report. This is another service actually. This is the service which we uh, give. Uh, in that we uh, give you the product and industry export export numbers, uh, top exporting countries, India's potential in that country. It means let's say we are exporting um, 100 crore um, uh, product in that country, and that country is importing products worth 1000 crore. So 900 crore materials they are buying from others. That is our potential. That kind of analysis we can give you. And then we can also give you the top buyer list, company names, who are buying your product in that country. So we have access to some authentic systems, data, and uh, we can help you to prepare this report for your industry or for any product. You can just tell us your product name and your uh, HS code. We can give you this report. This is another service. In today's webinar, we um, I promise you that we will give you the ebook and uh, one buyer so that we will give you free of cost but if you want an analysis report that's a, a different service if you want this you can talk to our executives okay mbbs report now what next we suggest to take a decision we suggest that all of us all indians now should focus on international market also so domestic is also good business business we cannot ignore it but at least 20% products we should start selling outside now. So it will take it will take time to understand the global system, standards, quality, packaging, certifications, requirement, you know, financial, banking system. But we have to start. At least 20% we can sell. You might be manufacturer, wholesaler, farmers, or whatever you are, or you might be service providers also. Start whatever with you, whatever you have. Even if you can get 25,000 rupee order, that is also fine. But you will understand the global, global perspective and then it will take your business to the next level. Okay. So, so that's what is about this uh, import export. Now we will quickly go through our work, what we did in this industry. So this is our portfolio, which we have worked on till now. A lot of commodities, vegetables, fruits, and other processed food. This is my uh, portfolio. We also worked in livestock, right? So we are also on Startup uh, India and uh, the Smart City Panels and uh, Government of India invite us to educate these startups because they are all startup. Government is funding them. So they also, government want them to educate on uh, export import also, right? So this is one news covered in uh, leading newspaper in Maharashtra. What is the potential in um, onion? So we think that we can sell onion, we can feed onion to the half of the world. 
half of the world that's the potential in such a single a simple commodity only onion right and we have seen that onion was 100 rupee kg per last year it means 1 kg onion can fetch us 1 and 1/2 dollars which is huge it can change the economy that's only one product there are thousands of product which we have and if you work on every product i mean sky is the limit that's the potential that's what uh, we discuss here these are our suppliers who do packaging for us these are consignments of our uh, students uh, onion consignment to sri lanka there are many people who work in uh, import we saw that import is a big business than export today in india all dry fruits are coming from outside edible oil coming from outside ready made garment many things are coming from outside whatever you see around your laptops mobiles phones screens tv led solar from where it is coming it is imported you know so import is also big business raw material is also getting imported so these are our consignment rice wheat flour jaggery while preparing containers this is the fresh vegetable consignment to gulf country this is fruit consignment a pomegranate to um, gulf country this is our livestock consignment what we did differently we did this differently there are very few people in livestock export and we are one of them so i am from a farmers family so i have stud farm so horse is my product so i tried that and i exported that also <laughs> so so before 3 years i was clueless about this that this is my first export right so we exported this to sri lanka from south country if you see the container that is also customized our customer made container customized the container he manufactured the container he sent it to india you know we ma, me I, i myself went to this port for the custom clearance that custom officer saw these horses first time in his life 400 people gathered there to see the horses and then we got a chance to go to the go on the vessel i went on the vessel the container was kept on or boarded on the vessel before our eyes to guarantee us that your horses are safe and that's the experience we got in first shot only so what i'm trying to tell you that i did this when i was not having much knowledge if i could do this you can also do this we were talking about the commodities commodities this is the live animal there is a two month procedure for this exporting this and we did that also how we did that only because of our decision yes this is my product i have to export it let whatever happens i have to export it happened okay then indian this association horse association then they went to that country to explore new market and all those things and initially they were laughing at us this is not possible but we made it possible right so these kind of things are possible just believe in yourself in your product in your knowledge in your capability and start take initiative well so now we can also help you to become an exporter if you want to become an exporter we recommend you our advanced trading program because if you want to start something start with the knowledge otherwise you will get stuck somewhere whatever bad stories we are hearing around are only because of half knowledge right or over confidence or ignorance or over excitement okay so let's avoid all of that let's learn let's learn what is right how it happened practically how it happened actually and federation is sharing that experience right training is not our major business our major business is export but to grow that business we need associates how many products i will work on i need people somebody work in every different products pulses is there rice is there wheat is there vegetables are there mango is there pomegranate is there grape is there fisher is there textile is there so we get requirement from all these things so we want to grow this community so if you want to become exporter we advise you to take up this 10 day online import export training program you know we have best of the best our videos for that whatever sessions we have conducted the best videos we will or uh, not um conduct that program and we also have a live question answer session whatever questions you have we will answer them right so today we are giving you an offer with this training program we are also offering free ic import export code license for your company 
you have to register your company and you just have to tell us we will give you this license import export code and then we will also give you free mbbs report for your product any product market and buyer business search report okay we can tell you the report which country has the potential for your country uh, your product and who are the buyers we can give you up to 50 buyers that's what we promise you and this package we are offering today this package is worth 24000 rupees but today we are offering exclusively for you at 50% discount that means 12000 rupees right so offer is before you this course is also available in english or hindi right the batch is starting very soon next week we conduct this program daily 3 hours let's say 6 to 9 but you have a timing issue then we can give you the links and you can watch it at any time that is also possible so timing should not be an issue well so this is what is an offer to you and if you want to get into import export industry we advise you this to get result fast we have seen people who started learning import export before two years and today also they are learning <laughs> so, but we have success stories who has brought the result in 30 days 30 days after training so you can save your time your time is also valuable why to waste time on unnecessary things there are many free things available in the market if you see there are courses available in the market for 299 rupees i saw one fellow selling that then 2000 rupees then 5000 rupees then 10000 rupees then 25000 rupees then 50000 rupees then 1 lakh rupees then 2 lakh rupees also but we think whatever you want to learn whatever is required to know for your first export shipment we cover all that practical aspect which is more than sufficient we cover that in 10 11 days that is this course after that we are offering you lifetime support wherever wherever you go whatever product if you have if you face any difficulty you can reach out to us you need support for shipment you need uh, so packaging support or whatever you are not get you have an order you're not getting a sub product at best price we will try because now federation is a big network so all these resources are there available so once you get the knowledge you also have product you also have network so combinedly it is possible right so also when you start with proper knowledge there is a less risk in that business why to test poison now okay let's learn and then uh, face uh, then start the business confidently also better roi as i said don't waste your time on other um, things take proper knowledge and start you will get the result soon so in this program what we cover so we cover all these things import export cycle in quote term the international commercial terms are there payment terms are there are all documentations uh, around 25 30 documents are there we cover each and every document then there are financial schemes by the government of India, pre-shipment scheme, post-shipment finance schemes. We cover that very interesting part. Then risk management, what kind of insurances are there, how much it costs, from where to take, how to take it, and how to take claim if something happens. Because in these two years, we have faced challenge only once. Only one of our associates who faced the fraud, and we helped him to recover 80% of his loss, Federation we have experienced that whatever other people experience we don't care we don't see and we don't consider that that is their capability their experience their you know um, worthiness we have taken insurance from government because we have good relationship with the officers and we are a federation right we have experienced that ourselves then um, government support and schemes there are many schemes government of india is offering all of them how to apply what is the benefit what is the meaning of that scheme then packaging, packaging standards, what are the ways of packaging, what is good for you, what factors you should consider, then custom clearance procedure, how it happens, port operation, what happens at the port, how does custom clearance happen, All right, what is the role of CHA, what is the role of custom officer, what document they check, what receipt you get, how much it costs, how much time it takes, what is the safer way, where you should do the packaging stuffing of your cargo, all those things we consider there. And we also show you some things what happens on the port that also we will show you then product selection market analysis 
then international marketing how to market your product and company how to find buyers after finding buyer you will get a buyer fine what to do with him <laughs> shall i call him shall i write an email what will i do with him how can i propose it? if you start asking some questions to your buyer he will say oh this looks he looks the new guy either he will ignore you or he will make you bakra <laughs> right people will never buy from new people i mean people who doesn't have knowledge the first thing that you should get knowledge of your uh, product industry and this export export cycle then client communication export pricing we will show you our email box how we communicated with our client how we got the order what we replied to them how payment came to our account how we calculated the pricing we will teach you everything what else you need to start with this is more than sufficient right and we don't want you to depend on us we will give you much more than that these are all technical knowledge but we will also teach you the business strategy how you should structureize your export business your company what should be the strategy how to grow we are not salesman we are a businessman right there is a difference in these two things so we will tell you that also because we co i come from a startup industry so i have that knowledge business strategy incubation funding investments all those things okay so all this package we are offering it to you the offer is before you online training plus ic plus mbbs report today only at 50% offer 50% discount that is 12000 rupees today you can book it you can book your seat just for 3000 rupees and the remaining payment you can make before the course start that is fine so just by paying 3000 rupees you can confirm your seat because there are limited seats you know we don't gather too many people you know so we have limited seats and uh, if you want to start if you want to get results if you want to do your shipments this is the right decision you should take well so this is the one time investment for your life i will tell you i will ask you one question we all go for you know uh, dining out weekend we go out on weekend for dining for dinner in a month we must be spending 10 10 12000 rupees on that easily so today we are proposing you to spend that 12000 rupees on yourself that's the biggest investment on yourself to get the knowledge to get a different perspective about international industry international business i'm sure once you do this course you will understand this well and you can do it and you will never forget these things in your life so we are expert in that you know we have seen people from other institute and other companies or other you know uh, organizations they are coming to us for help because other organizations are just professors but here we ourselves are exporters also and we are a big community we are a big federation we have all resources right and this is we have a different strength you can read our reviews on google on uh, facebook on just dial you, everything is transparent you can visit our website everything is there right so the student who invested that 24000 rupees let's say what is his roi return on investment so he exported four containers in his first two months so his profit was more than 1 lakh rupee that's an roi that's what he gained out of his investment right and again that is for lifetime he started a new business this fellow who did this he is a fresh agriculture engineering graduate his father and mother both are teacher he doesn't have any business background fresher but very aggressive learner go getter network builder result is there more than 30 containers he exported in a year from my district that's my contribution to india and we created so many exporters like this right so we have seen that this knowledge is helping people to build their businesses and this is helping india also to raise, increase the export that's what is our mission and vision well so that's all from our side uh, if you have any specific question we can take this is what again we do uh, for you if you see this is what we did today give you information and help you decide 
shall I get into export or not? Yes or no, right? If you decide, then we will do the capacity building, your capacity building. Then we will do all your licensing work. Then we, will, we can also build your website. We can give you logistic support. We can give you consultation for your product, how to market that. We can communicate with your client. Many people are not very confident, so they take our help. Sir, please talk to our client and uh, help us in getting the deal. We do that also. Sourcing support. Many people get order, but they don't get product in right pricing because you need a very good sourcing network for that. Right. So Federation has that. So that, that also we will try to support you. Insurance support, as we told, very important in this business. We have a good relationship with officers and we know how to get it. Network building. We ourselves are a network of 30,000 plus people. Funding support, yes. Federation has the funding support available for agriculture portfolio because that's my portfolio. I faced some problems, I found a solution. So if you have a secured order of agriculture export of any value, we can do that, right? So that is available. And uh, we can also execute your orders. Let's say you are doing marketing, you are let's say in, uh, sitting in other country, you have a requirement, we can do that order. Or we have a lot of associates who get trained from us, we give, give it to them, they do that export work. Right. So we have many capable exporters now. So these are all things we do under import for federation. Well, and uh, we again request you to please review us on Google. You can also read previous reviews about our training and other things. So this is the one review um, live there. There are now almost 400 reviews on Google. And uh, you can just read them. Everything is transparent. Well, so that's all. Um, thank you all. We want your feedback. The first thing, please review us on Google. First thing you have to do after this webinar. The second thing is that you have to join us on your uh, Facebook. You have to like our page and you have to join our Facebook group, Import Export Federation. And then third thing, you have to email us your product name and NHS code. So that we can give you ebook and we can give you buyer. You have to do all these three things, right? This is what we just ex expect out of this webinar. We gave you some knowledge, so we also expect something out of this from you. Just one review on Google, right? And uh, on this Facebook uh, group, you can also promote your products, your product photographs, your pricing, your location, your company. You promote that. There are a lot of buyers. Or if you have any requirement, you want something, some product from India, you can promote, uh, you can post your requirement also. If you are from other country, if you are need, if you need anything, you post on our uh, you know, Facebook group, sure shot, you will get a response. Or we are also watching that. So we also will connect our exporters to you. Right. So thank you all. Well, that's all our uh, from our side. Yes, webinar is almost ended. If you have any um, question, we can ask. Okay, so there is uh, currently I have no product. There is one comment. No problem. Once you get this knowledge, in that uh, the course we have one session product selection. In that there are some factors around 12, 13 factors which we consider to select your product. Right. The first thing we we uh, recommended that whatever background you have. Let's say I'm a farmer. My father is farmer. We grow onion. Uh, uh, we grow pomegranate, we grow lemon. So I thought of that. I started from there. If I'm a farmer and I'm thinking of exporting diamonds, will that happen? Yes, that will happen, but that will take years. Why to waste that much time? Let's start what we have at home. So I don't, I was not having much knowledge of agriculture, but I have this product. So I started with that. Now I can do anything. I can export processed food. I can export uh, other products. We are trying other products also. It's not a big deal. The system is same. The law is same. Licenses are same. Regulations are same. Everything is same. It doesn't matter. Right? We exporters are service provider. We have to analyze the market. We have to analyze the demand. And we have to fulfill that demand from sources available in our country. That is the export. Right? In export, you can outsource many things. Let's say I'm an exporter. I'm sitting in Mumbai. 
So let's say I got an order of onion. So will I go and grow onion? Not required. I have many suppliers. I will call them. Boss, I have this requirement. Tomorrow I want one container loaded on JNPT port. Tomorrow he will send one vehicle. That's it. But I have done that groundwork. Which sources are genuine? Are they good? Do they understand quality? And are they doing the quality work? All those things are there. That field work we have to do. Right. Well, so if you even if you don't have product, don't worry. You can easily choose your product or start with a simple product like agriculture or handicraft. These are simple products. You know, you will get everywhere and you can promote that. You can market that. Tomorrow, if you think or you will, if you come across other opportunity, you can take that product also. Not a problem. Well, yes. So thank you all. And um, yes, we are ending this webinar now. So we strongly recommend you to take the advanced course if you want to get into import export industry. And uh, if you have any connections overseas, if you have any, um, your relative, your friend who are there overseas, then definitely we are interested in exploring that network. Let's work combinedly and let's see what we can do. Okay, so thank you all. And uh, we'll be in touch. Please review us on Google and join us on Facebook. Thank you.